What's going on guys? Dan here, DD Speed Shop. So, in the garage, working on the old uh, convertible. It actually kind of looks like a convertible now. I've walled everything up. Looks like it's just a taken apart convertible. Today, uh, we're going to try and run a little bit of wiring. Maybe a little bit of uh, plumbing for some fuel and brake lines. We'll see where the day, the day takes us. So, I got the Amazon stuff. Uh, these are the brake lines. I get this stuff all the time. This is that uh, nickel copper super easy to flare You buy these kits on Amazon. I think they're 25 bucks to come with fittings. So I got uh, 316 so that's all the front stuff and then, uh, quarter and same thing came with fittings. So the way I run the tri fives is you do uh, Quarter to the proportioning valve I believe and then the front is 316 and then out the back is quarter again to the rear end and then uh, 3 16 on the on the diff. I got this wiring harness. Uh, Frankie pre-opened it uh, straight from China. I don't even know what brand this is. Um, so I've been buying the well, I don't even like spending money on uh, Shuiwei, but uh, so I got this one. Amazon China. It was one hundred dollars. So we'll see if it's any good or not. It's definitely different. I don't even know who makes it. There is no. All it has is directions. There's no name or no nothing. So we'll see. Uh, I didn't get the absolute cheapest one. There was one that was 60 bucks, but I read the reviews on it and the wires were not labeled and the wires are only six or eight feet long. So everyone was complaining that you'd kind of get the start of it. Then you'd have to re like length all the wires to the taillights, the fuel sender, the front end, all that sort of stuff. So it's basically just kind of a harness and a starting point. This one was, like I said, 100 bucks or 120 or whatever. It's definitely better quality. Everything is uh, labeled. Not, not showing up there. It's not labeled as many times on the wire as, as the other harness. But it's pretty good. And the bonus, it's wired up like a GM. So you can put all this stuff in for a standard GM column. I did order a tilt column for this thing, so it should just go in together. The only thing I'll have to wire up is the uh, start switch. I ordered a new key and ignition switch. I don't know where I put it though. Comes with new uh, headlight, stuff like that, uh, connectors or whatever you want to call it. Miscellaneous grounds, connectors, zip ties. So really, it'd be pretty good. And honestly, the other one, I, I'm not a big fan of the way it uh, bolts under the, or connects, there's really a whole lot. This one you can, bolt it in should be pretty good the cheaper kits also the real cheap ones didn't have any flashers the medium one had a flasher but no four ways so i don't know i think it's money well spent myself yeah, should be pretty good so we're gonna get to oh, i gotta rip all the existing wiring out of this thing which is just an absolute rat's nest see if the ignition switch is still any good pull all that out and then we'll just start kind of running the wires, maybe front to back, put some stuff under the hood. Because, you know, we have the motor in here. Everything's kind of going together at this point. There's still some welding and all that to be done and body work and all that. But it's solid. Everything's together. The fuel the fuel system's in, or like the, the fuel tank's in, the motor's in, the transmission's in, the drive shaft's just sitting there. It's a little too short. But in all reality, this thing should be able to kind of run and drive under its own power in the next week or so if we get some wiring in. We could hot wire it make it run right now, but why uh, why rush? So I think that's the plan. Have it make a little bit of noise. I need a little bit of motivation. And I also, I want to start putting the dash and all that stuff kind of back together. I don't know. We're going to make a plan. So I'm going to clean up some of this junk and then we'll, uh, we'll lay this out. I don't know if it's, they're already pre kind of together. I guess it's Tail lights, so hopefully that whole section goes to the back, one section's under the hood, one section's under the dash for heater and radio and all those things we're not going to have. So, I'll get cleaned up, and we'll lay this out, we'll be right back. Okay, so, I actually started taking this apart and I thought this is probably something I should film. Um, it is kind of wired in three looms, back of the car, under the dash, and in front of the car, which is good but I like to make it a little more uh, user-friendly and stuff like that. There's some stuff like, for instance, this one here is power antenna. Well, I guess in this case, we don't have a power antenna. 
but that would be you know up at the front or whatever so we're just going to tie this off and leave it under the dash because it probably has switched power so we can tie into something like that for like triggering a relay um like we want to run like a well this one has got the fuel pump so i'll probably have a heavy wire uh, running through that we'll just use a relay to trigger it and stuff like that what i'm starting to do here uh these wires here so one is going to be to the battery so that's the power to the box itself one's the charge wire exciter wire for the alternator uh the positive side of the coil so those are all kind of the same this one here i have just off to the side this is for a the horn uh, yeah horn and then there's some other ones i saw which will be senders so temperature sender oil pressure sender stuff like that which again i'll probably run mechanical gauges so i'll use those so i'll just run those you know tie them up or, or do something like that so i'll get this all kind of spaghettied out once i get what i want i'll just kind of zap strap them together so i know what's what so we'll go in the front for instance i'll probably have all the electrical like i said this is probably all it's really going to be under there uh, on one bundle and then all the headlights and tail or well, headlights turn signals stuff like that will be on another one and the senders and whatever will just bundle up and leave under the dash so let's make it happen spaghetti mess is uh, organized. So we're gonna have our fuse panel, which will be under the dash, obviously. These ones here I've looped off. These are the return for the senders and stuff like that. We're currently not gonna use, but we may. And on the other side here is the, the feed side. So those two go nowhere. At the back, we have tail lights and stuff like that. Now with these kits, you gotta be a little creative. Not creative, it's just, you have to know in your own mind. So they're only going to run back uh, brake lights, left and right turn, and park lights. And uh, so you got to make sure your park lights are also your license plate lights, uh, anything like that. And they have a fuel gauge. I then also put in a thick, I think it's 10 gauge wire uh, for the fuel pump. And I just ran it up and it's just sitting up by the uh, fuse block because we'll probably have a, a relay up there which will carry on right to the battery or starter or wherever the hell we're pulling power from maybe even right from the box but that's there and, and run ready to go on tri fives that just runs along the side here under the carpet so we'll carry on with that then i just kind of started looping things together which i thought would go well so this is like brake light switch power in power out hopefully this thing has a switch it does this is i believe all under dash yeah so this is going to be uh dimmer switch power stuff like that the headlight power it has your signals left and right for the on the dash signal that sort of thing it's got the gauge power it's got the fuel gauge obviously running there to there so that'll be hooked up right to the cluster basically these two wires oh that's fan so one's fan power one's fan trigger so i just put those two together we'll skip ahead so that's where your fan power goes, or whatever you want to call it, right to the fan itself. That's horn. So that's, this is, these are going to go through the firewall. So I looped uh, horn and fan together. This is for the motor itself. So heavy wire, which actually powers the, uh, the panel, either from the battery or the starter. It's got tack, alternator, 
uh, charge wire, kind of stuff like that. So that's kind of more motor things. This here, which is really long, these are the opposite of the back. So this is your headlights, high low beam, park, and turn. So that's gonna go ahead so it looks like a lot, but really it's not that bad. And then this is the last bit. And this is where, again, depending on what you're wiring, life can be a lot easier. These are essentially gonna go to the column. This is your uh, high low beam or headlight switch on the floor. But these will all be going to a, a connector which go to the column, which will determine your brake lights and your turn signals. Cause all that is happens through the turn signal switch. So I order a new column, it'll have the new switch in there. Wires run down, we'll terminate those, that together. This goes to a floor switch. And then these, I guess these are GM connectors. I've never used them. Uh, but this will have to be snipped up and turned into, I'll just terminate the ends and use them on a factory uh, Tri-5 ignition. But it'll have power in, switch power out, stuff like that. Uh, the blue wires or purple wires, probably the, the solenoid on the starter. Uh, something will control pink wire here. It's probably to the coil or triggers coil. Yeah, maybe switch coil. So that's all it's going to do. Has power going in, it'll power up part of the panel because some of these will probably have power all the time and some will only have power when the key is on for accessory, like radio and stuff like that, crank and coil. So that is a wiring harness uh, in a nutshell. I gotta say, it's not bad. It's pretty well laid out. There's just a couple of wires which were weird, which I don't quite understand. Under the dash, it has two wires that are left front park and uh, left tail park go to the under dash. So I'll look at instructions if there is any and see what that means. If it's tagging off something you gotta at least use the wire and you gotta use it for something else. But otherwise, pretty simple. The wire itself, you know, it looks pretty thick. It probably looks thick on camera. The insulation is twice as thick as I've ever seen on any wire. It's definitely chintzy on the copper itself, but for what we're doing, it'll be just fine. So we'll get this laid out in the car. I'll pull the hood off and uh, really just wiring up the car like everything else. I mean, this, it couldn't be simpler. A 12 circuit uh, base model kit. There's no power windows. There's no, you know, power locks, air conditioning, power seats, all that sort of stuff to worry about. Headlights, taillights, ignition, is it charging? What else do you need? So, we got everything kind of where we want it. Pulled out the old, those remaining of the wiring harness. We're not gonna use much or any of this. Keep all these bulbs and stuff. Those are for the instrument panels or for the sockets they're pain to find. Otherwise, it's pretty much old junk. Um, Buy a new wiring harness. Don't don't be cheap and use old junk. If you're gonna keep the car. Make it nice. Um, <clears throat> okay, so everything coming out here that will be in the cluster. Everything here will be to the ignition switch. I actually dropped the ignition switch off with Murr. He's got to drill it out and put a new. I have a new tumbler and stuff. Support a senior. Uh, tail lights and whatnot are gonna run back. That's where the factory location is. We're keeping it loose, so I still got to get in and weld all up in here, so I'm not securing anything just yet. Uh, we're going to have the fuse block up in the factory location. This is all the stuff that we're currently not using, but easily could use. I love these old floor operated high low beam. And the best part is these 55 and 6, they actually went through the floor and this sat in the elements and screwed up all the time. 57, they made this little plate and it sits in a little indent in the floor. How cool is that? Anyways, the other stuff. We shot forward, so uh, up in the sides so there's actually a little bulkhead connector, which is where the factory uh, lights and stuff would be. It has a little connector. We didn't use that, but we used a little rubber grommet. And went through, so that'll be everything up there. Up to the side here, this is ignition, motor, all that sort of stuff, charge wire, so that'll be right there. So that's the plan, everything's kind of run. So I'm waiting on that switch from Murr, he'll take care of that. But I thought in the meantime, we switch from wiring to plumbing and we start working on the brakes. So I dropped it. I have the master right there. That's, uh, I buy them off like Nova's 70, 68 to 72 Nova front disc. 
that's what I always just get. So we're gonna use that. This is like your generic uh, metering block, which looks like it's already set for, we're all good. I just gotta redo the few lines here. Whatever, well, maybe I can redo some of it. So we'll pull the old master off, slide the other one on. This I usually just bolted or welded a couple of tabs to the inner fender. That's good. That'll be quick. The other thing I found in the basement while well, I was looking for parts, so you gotta, I got tri-fi parts, let's be honest. I use them. I found a hood bar, which is pretty cool. Not in, it's a little bit pitted and stuff. I think this is the one I took off Danny's car and I got a better one. But it'll suit this hot rod. Whoop, gentle. And this is driving me crazy. I keep I'm trying to take the hood off and jam that in my crotch. It's not as much fun as it sounds. I do have a couple of spears. Lose these dumb lights, they ain't my style. I found also this is the uh, core support. Unfortunately, it's been chopped. This was off my 55 when I got it. And then when I went flip front end, obviously I didn't need it. So, um, I don't think we use the whole thing, this is all bolted in. But these bars that go across here, I'll probably use those. Bend this back into place. I got this fancy aluminum radiator from Performance World, which is a Canadian company, which is fantastic. The problem I'm going to run into, that's my own doing. Well, if I'm going to look at it. So, this is how they mount through the side there. You can see where the mounts are going to be. It wants to push the radiator back, which is fine, other than the motor is set ahead that inch, so I think it'll work. Now, these core supports are all the exact same. V8s, the, the rad was behind the core support. Six cylinders are on the front. So we'll pull the rad out. We'll get this all where we wanted, bolt it in. We'll do a crossbar. Then, really, if I cut this tab off and weld it on the front side, so just have this over here and the rattle bolt in it'll just be sitting ahead no big deal everything will fit just fine you can see that's where the drain is for the radiator anyways we're all good there hood hinges can be bolted on track down a battery tray because we don't have that that's pretty important when it comes to wiring battery and really it's coming together like right now real quick and we'll just uh i mean plumb a few lines i do got to get a hydraulic rear brake hose and do all the rear brakes but we'll get everything done at the front and kind of keep giving her so that's uh yeah that's the plan so i like this wiring harness i gotta say hundred dollars well spent would recommend okay so after a brief intermission we're back at it we're gonna start to uh, pull out the brakes wiring's kind of run i don't have a battery tray or something like that and uh what else we got going on oh i'll we'll do the radiator get that mounted so I can decide if I can use a factory radiator hose or if I need a uh, some universals. Anyways, the master comes off real easy, well, in theory. Yep, she seized. Like I said, the master comes off real easy. So the factory single pots have four uh, fine thread studs in the firewall, which hold it in. And this uh, little push rod, this actually should have been stuck to the pedal. There's a little pin that goes through there, but this is adjustable. So you gotta take it off, clean it up, and you have to adjust it because the uh, dual pot's a little different. Now anyways, the more modern, uh, <laughs> brake master so we're talking 70s the really all you got to worry about is the bore size which these work out pretty good so the brakes have a good feel and ultimately the depth i mean really the, the press on it you have a fair bit of adjustment on these rods so it shouldn't be an issue they are just too bolt gentle buddy but the uh, hole fits in bolts in just like that again fine threads if you want to change the bolts or the nuts or whatever Make sure you use the right stuff. I've done this on lots. There's no real issue. They don't screw up. They just work. Well, slight jump ahead. Um, the two studs I needed to use were stripped. So the reason that one nut I tried to take off, someone had jammed on a coarse threat nut 
onto a fine thread spline. Those don't match. Um, so I had to knock them out. I used the torch a little bit. It was pain. I actually ended up burning one of the wires, my brand new wiring harness. So pretty good mood. Uh, this right here is the proportioning valve. Nope. Metering block. Um, so I took some lines off and I just snipped this all apart. This one's very simple. So you have your two lines in and you have one out here for the front, one out here for the back. The front one I have running into a T, so left, right. The rear goes back into a rubber hose, which tees it across. All I'm going to do, I, I just mount these right on the uh, inner fender. So what I'll do is you just put like a bolt through it, sticks through. I'll give the uh, bolt a quick buzz, well, two bolts. It'll hold it. We'll thread this in, and then we'll uh, we'll get plumbing the front brakes. It's unbelievably easy. Um, the only thing I don't have is a couple of those little tabs. I'll have to get a couple of those or some way to, to hold the brake line. But yeah, get after it. This monstrosity is kind of together. Uh, we run the front line down to a T. So now this is obviously a cutoff line, but we'll run this to each of the brake lines we're going in the front. I gotta track down a couple of holders. I'm not gonna lie, this is boring me. It's frustrating me. This has been like an hour to get a brake master in, which should have been three minutes. I'm gonna leave that, I'll leave the wiring. I'm gonna mount the radiator with this uh, change out some crossbar pieces, which I have in the other uh, other piece bend this all out, make the rad fit proper, weld it all in proper. Then I'm going to take a break from this video, and uh, I'm not ending it, but I'll be back in a few days. And I'm working on something else, because this isn't fun right now, and I want to keep working, but I don't want to keep working on this. Okay, so I've been thinking over my plan for this grill shell, or for sport. Uh, I got so the way these tripods work, they have this little U-shaped thing. There should be a top bar that goes across, which ties the fenders together, which gives it a lot of strength uh, this way. So otherwise, all it has is this uh, front bar, and this U-shaped piece is actually what attaches everything to the chassis. So it's uh, it's important. So what we're gonna do, uh, and it has these two little kind of flaps to kind of force all the air through the center. Well, I got this one together, bolted up. This one was bent over. I bent it up best I could. Uh, back, it has to go this way. Well, it's a U-shaped piece, so it's got a lot of strength. So, we're gonna heat up with a torch, so we can bend her over and get a couple of uh, bolts started in it. Once you do that, uh, we'll have it kind of where we want it to be. I can strip the other one I have for the top bits to get that locked into place, and then I'll have to build the top bar, obviously, but that's, that's no big deal, that's after the fact. And then, because I was saying earlier, um, I need to move the radiator ahead of the core support, rad support, into the six cylinder position. Here's my thoughts. I could hack this one up and weld it on here. The other core support, I'm going to rip it right down to nothing basically. If I zip the, the supports off that are on the back on that one as well, and simply weld them on the front, this would be a dual purpose core support. Huh? Pretty smart. Now watch me torch this thing to the ground. Chop these little bits off the other car. Uh, 
Um, they're all riveted on. So what's very common in these stupid tri fives, people chop out the center bar. It's easier to get the motor out. And this is just bolted in, but then it's, it's just top bar is riveted across. Which is a bit of a nightmare, but what are you gonna do? So you gotta take it all apart and everything's all kind of together, but it gives it a lot more strength. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna push her down where it wants to kind of be. We'll give her a few tack bolts just to hold it. And then I might just nut and bolt all this together so that top bar can be taken out. So we'll do that. Then we'll weld on the front bit. We're gonna zip off that, uh, that core support. Do that, test fit the radiator in, nut and bolt it. Once everything's happy, then you just gotta run a bar across or something. The only thing that matters what it is, but uh, I'll just zap it real quick. There we go. Now the other thing I can do is if it's not perfectly in line, I can whack it now, and it'll actually have a little bit of strength and kind of hold itself. But uh, yeah. there you go, butchering stuff together that's already been pre-butchered. Well, check this out. I'm pretty stoked. Hopefully this all works out. But there you go. I got that one on this one. Uh, it would appear as though someone went a little zip cut happy with it at some point. It was probably me. Um, so the trick to perfectly uh, aligning these side to side, let's just guess. Kind of give her one of these. One of these. Ooh, that sounded terrible. Perfect. Give her one at the bottom. And then we'll stitch it together. Look at that, custom fit. Uh, I gotta get some shorter bolts, so it's just kinda in there. I have some like, I don't know, one and a half or one and a quarter, it's probably it's like three quarter. I could grind those down, but <clears throat> that ain't happening today. I gotta do just a little bit of massaging at the bottom of the core support too, where it's all kind of bent up, there's a little lip. I'll get that out, but otherwise, you put your fingers around it, which is good. It's, it's a solid mount, it's not gonna rattle around, touch anything. Uh, I gotta figure out the bar now go across somehow the back probably I don't know what that might be down the road uh, a lot of guys said when you cut these bars I've never seen it but it'll actually because the force going this way it'll actually pull the radiator apart look at this performance world Canadian I love Canadian product you can't go wrong with it uh, now I just got to stop if I paint it black or leave it uh, shiny aluminum you guys let me know that's where I'm leaving it for now uh, I'm not done this video but I'm done working on this video right now I'm gonna go carry on with something else We'll be back at this in a couple of days to finish it off. We'll plumb the front end, we'll run a line back, we'll get the brake uh, adjuster and all that kind of in, so it's 100% done, maybe bleed the brakes. Who knows where we'll go with it, but, uh, oh, I gotta do the whole rear brake, so maybe not. We've got lots of stuff to do yet. Yeah, we'll see you guys in a little bit. Well, it's been a couple of days. Uh, I'm gonna get back to this wiring. I'm still not really motivated about it, but I put on my whale and wire shirt, so that's always a good motivator. Um, picked up a few things today, steering column. Ooh, ah, with the universal Chevy connector. Actually, I had a couple cherry bomb mufflers. Canadian Tire had these. These are like your 26, eight inch, whatever, two and a half inch thrust. We're gonna put those on. Danny's reading a book. I got the front wheels off. Uh, I mounted the radiator. I just got a couple bolts, put that in, no big deal. And now I'm going to, well, I cut off the uh, mounting tabs for the brakes. because they were in the uh, back. They gotta be in the front the uh, hydraulic lines so we'll put that in there uh, I'm just gonna make the lines to go across we'll do that real quick on the bench uh, it should be pretty simple I have all the fittings I need and that fancy brake tool and we'll just literally run it across the front of the, the frame here we have our little T that side super short this side's a little bit longer we'll do that I'll probably jack the back up I think I have enough line i can run a fuel line front to back i have a mini starter for it i want to put the mini starter in and i don't have a battery tree yet that's only i don't have a battery i gotta find one um i'll pull it out of something so we can do that then i can hook everything up and start running wires i'm not gonna need lights or anything like that mer uh did the ignition switch welders in the wing 
Uh, I got a new, well, new to me. Nope. Nixon switch. So I wire that all up so we can at least trigger it, get the thing to roll over. All right, all seats and all that stuff are in from the other video. I don't know what video came out first, so either surprise or you already saw that. Um, but yeah, I'd like to have this thing kind of roll over, dump a distributor in, get the fuel line going, and then, I mean, we should be able to make it make some noise through those fancy mufflers in the next day or so. I've tracked down a set of good used fenders. I'm going to pick those up probably on the weekend, a few days from now. So if we do that, then we can start body working this thing. We have running driving, 57 Chevy rag top, that needs body work, and a windshield, and a windshield header and stuff. But otherwise, we're getting there. Danny's judging. All right, so I'll, uh, yeah, we'll see you on the bench. We'll make this uh, brake line. All right, here's floating kit. I recommend buying one, or something decent anyways. That's the line we're gonna use. I just kind of quickly bent it up. Make sure you put both fittings on before you flare the ends. Don't forget that. I forget that all the time. This one's super easy. Uh, super easy. You put it in, it has a little uh, stopper so you get the perfect stick out every time. You know, you buy those cheapy kits with the big wing nut and stuff, and they're fine, but uh, I always find them a pain. This is super easy to get the exact right amount of material. The uh, other thing, this line is super flexible, which is just absolutely fantastic. You have your little dies, whatever you want to call them. Put it in for the single flare. But you can leave it like that. Not for brake lines, obviously, but for me, you can just... Another line gives a little bump. Get your cone. Tighten it up. Give her... Loosen it off. It's a bit of a pain because the line's curved. There you go, you got your perfect flare every time. Look at that, that's like, it's like something you buy at the store. It's factory. Anyways, I'm gonna install this. I already got the longer one done, this is the short one. We'll get it put on, and I think we're gonna take a bit of a dinner break, and we'll jack the thing up, and we'll start working on the back of the car. Well, I've been working a lot under the car. It's now nighttime, and my flashlight was dead. So I'm charging that real quick. I got the fuel line and the brake line run it was so much of a pain this x brace thing is terrible it's terrible terrible um i got the exhaust kind of run i did it one way didn't like it did it another way it's okay uh no tailpipes on it but good enough for now what else i do under there i don't know the, the night has just gone away by that being an absolute pain under there um i've also decided the transmission cross member i'm just going to weld it in solid because we have a bunch of reading and people are saying these tri fives the convertibles you couldn't service the transmission without pulling the motor out anyways even right from factory so i'm going to weld the mount in then motor transfer together anyways i've been playing with the column so i've got it said i did a video on this uh probably two months ago on the 56 chevy way more in depth that wagon i have or if you don't know, I have a 56 Chevy wagon, I put a column in it. So you got about where I want it to be. It's a very simple setup. It has this uh, coupler, which is overly pricey, but it goes from, I think it's one inch to three quarter. Uh, it's like a uh, D shape or whatever they want to call it. On the factory call or the factory steering box, it has this rod. So what you do is you cut it off. Unfortunately, the, the last guy had this, he cut it a little bit short for my liking. Another half inch or inch would have been nicer. So we're not gonna have as much meat. I got about probably an inch or so into the into the D going on the steering box and another inch or so uh, maybe going on to the, the column. So should be fine. It has these set screws that go through it and then kind of a couple of locks get right in there but so you can see how it works now what i'm going to do is i'm going to weld this one solid the whole way around so essentially the coupler you put set screws in to kind of center it the best you can and then i'm going to put the heat to it weld the coupler right to the shaft so it's on there it ain't going nowhere and then the the other part of the coupler is kind of adjustable you can maybe put a tackle on it if you're really worried about it i think it'll be fine 
you just don't want that to come loose because you'll have no steering. This car, unfortunately, I didn't notice till now, but all the stuff for the column is missing. Uh, there's a little clamp and a few things that are kind of used. One piece attaches to the firewall uh, down at the bottom to hold it, and there's another piece that goes around here. This piece is just basically a piece like a U-bend with some rubber mounts in it. So that's not the end of the world, but the piece down there I'd like to get it as well. It has a side clamp to kind of hold it. But for now, once it's all welded, and I can make some sort of clamp at the top, it'll be okay for just, you know test drive. We gotta find the clamp. I gotta start making a list of parts I need, because unfortunately, this car being a parts car, it's now missing a bunch of parts it needs. So I'm gonna make another trip out. It's probably the wrecking yard I got this thing with a, a list of stuff. But anyways, I'm gonna put the heat to this thing real quick. We'll have camera charges, I'll show you underneath and I'm done for the night. This video is kicking my ass. I don't know why, it just is. And I think I'm gonna finish off tomorrow maybe just with a few more things. I'd like to wire up the column, put the starter in, just do a few things like that. Maybe have it so the key makes it crank over. Have some sort of win. This is one of those, this is the part of the car where you give her, but nothing's really happening. So I'll be back shortly. We got the coupler on. So just want to make sure the kind of the column is straight as you can. Give her a few tacks or, you know, tack it, spin it, tack it, spin it. One of those situations. Unfortunately, we're just on a uh, zap strap, but the wheels turn. So that's gold. Um, I'll go under this lovely hot rod. So what have I accomplished? Today's one of those one 365 days where, you know, you gotta get something done, but not nearly as much as you were hoping. Originally, I had put the mufflers at the back, like where they always go. That didn't work. There's not enough room. So we put them right up there. I think it'll be uh, fine. I don't know. It's so dark. It's late. Half my bedtime. I hogged out the hole just a little bit where it goes through. These are all just sitting there. Nothing's, nothing's really permanent. The so, anyways, you can see the you know, screw around. You got to do for the fuel line. Let's go through there, make a little whatever up and around and back. Uh, the drive shaft fell on my face. That was awesome. They actually got to put a coat of paint on the yoke so I know where it is. So I drive off the the uh, U joint guy, drive shaft guy. He'll know what to do. And then we ran the brake line down this side, so that's our leave it for tonight. Again, another bit of a fail. Tomorrow, wiring, put a battery in, make it roll over, put some converter bolts in it, and collar. And the video after that, we'll try and make it run. Deal? Deal. Yet another day. We gotta end this stinking video. Um, it's gonna be a funny one. I'm just gonna end it. I'm gonna get. What I want to do is make the thing crank over on the key. So I just put some wiring kind of where it has to be. The problem with wiring this whole thing, I don't have some parts yet. I don't have, this is gonna be an alternator, I don't have an alternator on me, pulleys on, nothing there, no belts. The two wires to the coil and the tack are right there. Well, what I wanted to do is I actually wanna do a video on static timing. So I'll do that all kind of together. I did just ratchet up battery in because I don't have the battery tree. It was on and on. I had to get a uh, drive shaft. Well, it's, it's actually the same. We well, put a new tube in it. You know, the old, uh, I guess the tubing stretcher was broken that day, so I had to pay for a whole new tube. But uh, so that should slide right in on the next video. And I think while I'm putting in the drive shaft, I should put in the ratchet shifter. It's just, there's so many things. So I gotta stop and see what I wanna do to make kind of some videos that tie together. At this point, the car, any corner of the car, you start working on. What I'm gonna do is show you how I'm gonna make this switch work, and then we're gonna. Uh, Hopefully crank it over, and then we're done. And then, well, the video's done, and I'll immediately start on something else. So what I've done, this thing is labeled, I don't know if you can see all those things. So, these older cars, a lot runs through the ignition switch. So we're gonna do a few things there. I've used this picture off the internet, I don't know how many times. But uh, it just kind of shows you what everything do it does. We're simply gonna go through, these are the two ignition ones. Snip the ends off. And wherever it says it goes, we're going to put a spade on it, hook it up to the key, which hopefully will work, because this is miscellaneous, original, and see if she cranks over. I put the starter in, we got the wire run from the starter to the battery, and uh, from the fuse block to the battery as well. 
So everything should just work. All right, I'm gonna get this all spaded up and then I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so we've got the switch all wired up. Uh, you know, wiring always looks complicated, but it's very simple. If you just take your time, you, you kind of learn how it works and a few grounds and stuff like that, grounds are always important. So the big heavy wire, that's power right from the battery. We're just gonna power the switch, so that's constant power. So we have our test light. Constant, oh, wait, there we go. That connection, but there you go, constant power. Nothing else has anything. Now this, these ignition switches, these are cool. These are, uh, you know, Tri-5 stuff, so if you have it all the way over to the left, it's lock, won't do nothing. If you have it uh, unlocked, then you can actually move it, so that's on, and the next one will be start. And you can't lock it unless you have the key. Cool, right? Um, this is for flashers. This one right here is powering the coil. This one right here is to the starter, to the, for the uh, trigger, the solenoid. And this one right here powers the uh, box. So the, uh, actually, you know what, this one is, it has to go to a constant power. I just thought of that. But uh, this one powers the, uh, the stuff in the box that will work all the time. So brake lights, uh, four-way flashers and stuff like that, which will work, you want the key off. For, for this, it'll work, it's actually irrelevant. But now, so you click it one or two clicks over because it goes from unlock. Now we have switch power. So this will be the accessories has switch power and uh, this will be the coil itself. So the, the motor will run. Now you'll notice this one right here, the, the purple wire has nothing. Now this will only go on when the starter is triggered. Now we could test with test light or we can just crank it over and listen. So there we go. So this works. I gotta say, this uh, this cheapy Amazon kit for 100 bucks, it's cheap. There's no bones about it. It's obviously not the greatest stuff. I had a piece here. No, oh, I can't find it now. But this, the wiring is, it's pretty on the chin side, no bones about it, but it'll get the job done. And for, for what we had, this is way better. So I think $100 well spent. That's where we're leaving this video. It now cranks over if we had fuel in the carburetor and power to the coil and it was timed properly, it would go brum. I know it will because this is a good motor. So I think what we're going to do next, uh, immediately after this we're going to type a bunch of loose ends. So drive shaft in, uh, shifter in, get all that set together, finish the exhaust, it's all just kind of sitting together so I got to weld it all together, put the hangers in, make that all go together. Uh, we'll probably plumb the rear brakes and do the rear brakes, get all that done in the next video. And then maybe even make it run. Like I said, I also want to do a video where we set the timing. So that'll be its own little thing as well. So those are the next couple of videos I got planned out. I should be able to get some of those knocked out in the next couple of days. But thanks for watching. Hopefully this one wasn't too sporadic and all over the place. And I will see you on the next video.